Good morning, everyone. Once again, hi. Uh, in the last class, we did uh, questions on kinetic energy. I taught you what kinetic energy is. I also introduced you to a concept called as angular momentum. So, in today's class, what we'll do is we'll study about angular momentum. Okay. So, once again, very basic questions on angular momentum. I basically want to teach you how to calculate angular momentum. Before I do that, once again, the momentum of a rotating object is called as angular momentum. Okay. So, angular momentum is best defined by its definition, which is L vector is equal to R vector cross P vector. So, if you tell that the angular momentum is the momentum of a rotating object, that is correct. There is nothing wrong with that definition, except that even non-rotating objects, even objects that do not rotate, okay, even objects that do not rotate can have angular momentum. Just remember that. This is a key point to remember that even the objects that are actually not rotating, we can have angular momentum for such objects. So, in today's class, what we are going to do is, I am going to give you some problems basically on how to calculate L and then we will see how to use L. So, first of all, how to calculate L vector. Keep in mind that the L vector actually has a cross product, there is a cross product over here. So, you require two things, you require R, you also require P. So, we require the radius vector and we also require the momentum vector of that object. So, let us go for the first question and let us see how it is done. Let us say that there is an x y coordinate system. We require a coordinate system to define R vector. Okay. So, let us say there is a coordinate system and at some point over here. So, let us say this distance is like 4 and this distance over here is let us say 3. So, at some point 4 comma 3 there is an object that is going forward at a speed of let us say 10 meters per second and the mass of the object is 1 kg. All of these values of course, I am going to make up, but the point is this object has some momentum. This is m that is the value of v. This is where the object is located. So, if you draw a straight line from that point to the origin, this vector over here is your r vector. r vector is 4 comma 3. So, over here we can first of all write r vector is equal to 4 i cap, 4 i cap plus 3 j cap. That is your r vector. What is your momentum vector? The momentum vector is given by mass multiplied by velocity. So, the mass is equal to 1 kg, the velocity is equal to 10 meters per second. What is the direction of the momentum? The momentum of this object is in the x direction. So, that is i cap. So, these are the two things you require. You require the value of r, you also require the value of p. Now, we can calculate the value of l. So, l is equal to, we can now write l vector is equal to r cross p. So, 4i plus 3j, that is your first vector, 4i plus 3j, r vector, cross, this is a cross product operation, 10i, 10i. How do you do cross products? To define a cross product, you might know this rule of defining cross products. You can take i, you can take j, you can take k, this direction is positive, the opposite direction is negative. So, if you have i cross i, i cross i, that is 0. So, the first cross product operation you will have is 4 into 10 is 40, but i into i, i cross i is 0. Same vectors, the cross product is 0 because the vectors are parallel to each other. So, i cross i is 0. So, the first term is 0. If you go for the second term, j cross i, that is negative. So, if you go in the reverse direction, that is negative. So, you have j cross i, r cross p, this is r, that is p, r cross p. 3 tens are 30, 
but j cross i j cross i is minus k so you will write minus because j cross i 3 into 10 is 30 and because j cross i is k so you will write 30 k k okay so this is how you calculate the angular momentum of an object now keep in mind this object over here this object is moving in a straight line okay if you look at this object this object is just basically moving in a straight line even then even if this object is not rotating this object has an angular momentum so that's what i said even objects that do not rotate can have angular momentum why is that that is because the value of angular momentum is a matter of definition this is a definition of angular momentum it is not a natural quantity it is actually a mathematical quantity that helps us in solving a problem so even if something is not rotating you can still have angular momentum for that object despite that i'll still try to show you how this object can have some kind of an angular momentum imagine that over here there is somebody who is standing and he is looking at that object okay so there is somebody who is standing over here and he is looking at that object this object is coming from one side so as this object starts moving forward the person will initially be looking like this after some time the person will be looking like that after some time the person is looking like this so in one sense the person has to turn his face to look at the object so if the object is over here the person will look at the object like that so the like you know the in that sense you are just turning your head to look at the object so the ang the direction of rotation the direction of rotation is like this so the direction is inwards if you have studied about the 3d coordinate system this is x that is y so inwards is minus z outwards is plus z you must have done this in school the inward direction is minus z okay so if the velocity is in this direction the axis of rotation is towards the inside take your fingers place it along the direction of rotation the axis of rotation is towards the inside so you will have minus k cap okay samajh maya so even if something is not rotating even then to look at that object for example like i take a chalk i drop it the chalk is initially up and as the chalk starts falling down like you know we are turning our face to look at the chalk so over here the direction of rotation is like this so the angular momentum will be in this direction okay so if towards you okay if towards you is the z direction this is the x direction whenever a chalk is falling down then the angular momentum is going to be in the x direction let's try that okay so let's for the next question let's show you that the angular momentum is in the x direction let's try that as a question let us say once again that this is a coordinate plane okay so this is z that is y this is x and a chalk is falling from here this is how a chalk is falling so at this point the chalk is falling from here at this point so we are not bothered about all of these places at that point the velocity of the chalk let's say is 2 meters per second and let us say it's a very heavy chalk so the mass of the chalk is equal to 4 kgs very heavy chalk okay mass is 4 kgs the velocity is 2 meters per second i'm dropping it so can you understand this question i'm standing over here this is my x direction that is my y direction okay that is my sorry this is my z direction i'm sorry this is your z direction that is the x direction towards the right imagining this coordinate plane so this is z this is x and this upward direction is y okay so that is y x and this is z so what i'm doing is a little bit forward i'm dropping a chalk over here so let us say this distance over here is 3 meters so what is the position of this point the position of this point is something in the z direction so x is 0 y is 0 but z is 3 that is the position of this point okay so i want you to find out the value of l vector what is l vector how would you do this to find out l you require two things you require r and you require p so to find out l you will require r vector you will also require p vector and once you find out both of these vectors you can take the cross product okay so what is r vector r is basically the position of this point so that point is at 0 0 3 so r vector can be written as r vector can be written as 0 i plus 0 j plus 3 k so that is 0 i plus 0 j plus 3 k 
k cap that is your r vector that is where the point is located what is the momentum my object is falling down so the velocity direction is downwards what is upwards y what is downwards minus y so y is written as j in vector form so you will write your momentum over here you will write your p vector over here as mass into velocity so that is 4 times 2 but what is the direction the direction is minus y so the direction is minus j cap so you will simply write 4 2 is 8 minus 8 j cap so we have both we have p we have r now if you want to find out l from here l vector is equal to r cap i mean r vector cross p vector so r vector cross p vector okay r ka value kya hai r value is equal to 3k so r vector is 3k cross what is p vector minus 8j so p vector is minus 8j multiply the numbers together so you will simply get 24 what is k cross j k and j are not the same so it will not be zero what is k cross j so we have to go in this direction so k cross j is minus i because this direction is negative that is minus i so k cross j is minus i in addition to that there is already a minus sign so this will become plus so like i told you this answer is going to be positive like i told you if you drop a chalk from here the chalk the chalk is over here initially as it is going to fall down i am rotating my eyes in this direction okay the chalk is initially up i am looking over here as the chalk falls down my rotation is in this direction so because this is the direction of rotation take your fingers place it like this the direction of your thumb gives you the axis of rotation so over here the rotation is in this direction the axis is towards that side so that side is plus x this side is plus x so the angular momentum over here is simply 24 i cap so much maya so this is how you calculate angular momentum even for objects that are not rotating so deliberately i chose an object that is not rotating i showed you how to find out the angular momentum angular momentum is a matter of definition keep this in mind i'm repeating it so many times the angular momentum is a matter of definition it is not something that is naturally there it's not like mass it is not like force it is not like energy it is a definition we define angular momentum to deal with objects that are rotating we also define torque torque is the rotational effect of a force in exactly the same way if something is moving in a straight line even then we can define angular momentum for such objects all right let's show you a few more examples so that you can learn how to calculate angular momentum keep in mind today's class is all about how to calculate angular momentum try to practice a few problems on your own okay from the chapter on rotational motion try to practice a few more problems on your own okay so let's go ahead board is clean let's go ahead let us say let's give you a slightly better problem let us say that there is an x y coordinate system okay there is an x y coordinate system and there are two particles let's right now keep it at one let's say there is only one particle and this particle is placed at let's say this position is 4 that position is 3 so we'll take simple values this point is 4 comma 3 and at this point the particle is moving in let's say this direction okay so the particle is moving in this direction with a speed of 10 meters per second so what direction is this this direction is let's say minus 3i plus 4j so that is the direction so if you want this thing like to be very simple let's give you the velocity as a vector quantity later on i'll show you how to derive it as a vector so right now let us say the velocity is minus 6i see it's going towards the left so minus 6i it is also going upwards so plus 8j so the value is 10 and the direction is like this can you find out the value of l in this case can you find out the value of angular momentum can you find out l vector 
वॉट डू यू नीड यू नीड आर वैक्टर यू नीड पी वैक्टर सो आर क्रॉस पी इज एल वैक्टर ठीक है दैट दैट थिंग इज वेरी क्लियर सो इन दिस केस बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ एल वैक्टर यू नीड टू डू टू थिंग्स यू नीड टू टेक आर वैक्टर यू नीड टू टेक पी वैक्टर एंड यू नीड टू फाइंड द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट दीज वैक्टर्स आर ऑलरेडी गिवेन टू यू सो आर वैक्टर इज सिंपली फोर आई प्लस थ्री जे एंड पी वैक्टर इज सिंपली इक्वल टू माइनस सिक्स आई प्लस एट जे द रीजन आई गेव यू दिस क्वेश्चन इज दैट दिस क्वेश्चन इज स्लाइटली मोर नंबर ऑफ कॉम्पोनेंट्स दैन ऑल द प्रीवियस वन सो जस्ट नो प्रॉब्लम राइट डाउन दिस एज अ मेट्रिक्स आई जे के डू यू नो दिस वे ऑफ क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाइंग यू मस्ट स्टार्ट इन द वैक्टर्स चैप्टर सो यू पुट आर वैक्टर फर्स्ट This one is your first vector. Always put R first. So 4i plus 3j. 4i plus 3j automatically means 0k. 6i 8j 0k. 6i 8j 0k. Done. Now you start calculating the cross product. First of all, you'll deal with i. So you cross out i. You will simply write i cap. you will write down the product over here then when you deal with j you take j this is your j and you cross out this as well so you remove this column over here but this comes with a minus sign this comes with plus sign that is plus sign but this is with minus sign so you will write minus j and then you will write the remaining components so for i you will write 3 into 0 minus 8 into 0 so which is just basically 0 minus 0 okay And for j, you will write four into zero, six into zero, right? You are removing the j, so you will write four into zero, six into zero. So that will again be zero minus zero. Okay. So in this case, you have r vector over here, you have p vector over here. I wanted to find out the cross product, so I blocked out i from here. So when once i is blocked out. I need to multiply. So three times zero is zero. Eight times zero is also equal to zero. So I get zero minus zero. Now for the j cap, you block out j. So you will get again four times zero, six times zero, which is again zero. So i cap and j cap is zero. Now for the last one, for the k component also, you will have to write. So that is plus k. For the k component, you'll also have to write the values. So plus k, four times eight. Four times eight. How much is that? That is thirty-two. Four times eight is thirty-two. Minus six times three. So six times three is eighteen. But there is already a minus sign. So minus eighteen. Minus of minus eighteen is plus eighteen. So these components are zero. But there is a k component. What is the k component? Eighteen plus thirty-two is equal to fifty. So your answer is fifty. This is how you find out the angular momentum of an object about some axis. In this case, the axis was the origin. Okay, so if you want to find out the angular momentum of something about the origin, this is how you would solve it. Does it satisfy the idea of rotation? See, when this object is moving like this, after some time, the object will be over here. So this is where the object is, which means that the object is rotating in this direction. So if you put your fingers like this, the thumb points outwards, and outwards is what direction? This direction is z vector. So, or this is the z direction. So this should be k cap. That's correct. So much better. So even if something is not rotating, you can still have angular momentum of such an object. Now let us deal with some more problems where we are not finding out the angular momentum about the origin. So let's take a problem. i think you must have studied about projectile motion so let's deal with a projectile motion problem and show you how to find out angular momentum in such situations so let us say an object is thrown it's a projectile okay so let us say that an object is thrown this is a point an object is thrown like this okay projectile motion let us say the range of this object the range is around 10 meters and the height of the object let's say is around 2 meters so these are values that are given to you later on i'll ask you to calculate these values 
so let us say that is 10 let us say that is equal to 2 so how much time will it take to fall from a height of 2 meters it will take approximately 2 by root 10 okay so let's not talk about gravity let us just simply assume that at this point the horizontal velocity of this object is 2 meters per second also okay so these values may not match i'm not saying that the acceleration due to gravity is 10 but this is a particle going in projectile motion like this let us also say that this angle is equal to 60 degrees just saying i am not saying that this thing is happening on earth this is a projectile so this angle is 60 that angle is also 60 this is 2 meters per second that is 2 meter this is 10 meters so that is the range also let us assume that at the initial point somewhere over here at the initial point the velocity of this particle is around 4 meters per second okay so initially it is 4 which means at this point also the value is 4 so a lot of values are given to you in this question don't worry i'm simply saying it's a particle undergoing projectile motion okay so some values are artificially given to make this question easy to understand the initial velocity is 4 so you can check that the x component is equal to 2 meters per second that remains the same the y component is something that eventually becomes 0 and over here that becomes again 4 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees that's a simple plane projectile motion problem i'm asking you about first of all about the origin this is a two parts question so first of all about the origin what is the angular momentum even in this problem we calculated the angular momentum about the origin so about the origin what is the angular momentum of the particle when it is at point a and when it is at point b so find the angular momentum find l about o find l about o when the particle is at point a and when it is at point b there are two parts to it so i think for a you can pretty easily calculate because the total distance is equal to 10 this half distance is equal to 5 so the position of this particle is along the x axis it is 5 along the y axis that is 2 so the position of the particle is 5 comma 2 so if you talk about a do you get it to find out l you require r and you require p so you first of all find out the value of r and then you find out the value of p so you take r you take p and you then you just do the cross product r comes on top p comes on the denominator i mean p comes on the second line and you do the cross product unless there are so many components like in this case we can directly do a cross product we don't need to write a matrix over here so this is your point that point is 5 comma 2 so you will write r vector okay r vector is equal to 5 i cap plus 2 j cap because it is 5 units forward and 2 units upward so it is 5i plus 2j what is the value of p so it is going in the horizontal direction i did not give you the mass of this particle let us say the mass of the particle is equal to 3 kgs so what is the value of p so over here the value of p is mass into velocity so 3 into 2 is 6 meters per second and it is going in the i direction so it will be equal to 6i cap so this is r this is p so to calculate L, what you can do is, you can write R cross P. So R, 5i plus 2j cross P. So 5 times 6 is 30, but i times i is 0. 2 times 6 is 12. So you will write 12, but j times i is minus k. Always keep in mind, we have i, we have j, we have k. This direction is positive, the opposite direction is negative. So you have j cross i. So that is j cross i this direction is negative so you'll write minus k so minus 12 k cap at this point if you understood this try to find out the angular momentum of the particle when it is at point p so here what is the angular momentum first of all you find out what is r where is the particle the particle is not up the particle is ahead so how far is it ahead 10 meters ahead so at this point the value of r is 10 meters ahead again so you will write 10 i not up not down so you will write 0 j so this is simply your r vector r vector is equal to 10 i plus 0 j what is the momentum of the particle 3 kg mass 4 meters per second but you will have to split it into components so that is what is new in this question you will have to split the velocity into components and then find out give it a try 
Let me erase this part of the board. You give it a try. All right. So, what is the velocity of that point? At that point, I'll draw the same figure over here. At that point, this is 4 meters per second. That value is 4. What is this angle? This angle is equal to 60 degrees, which means that the other angle is also equal to 60 degrees. So, in this direction, you have 4 cos 60. And in the vertical direction, you have 4 sin 60. Okay. Horizontal cos vertical sine. So 4 cos 60 is simply equal to 2 and 4 sine 60 is equal to 2 root 3. So in this case, you can write the velocity of the particle. The velocity vector can be written as 2 units ahead. So you can write 2i and 2 root 3 units in the downward direction. So minus 2 root 3 j cap. So 2 units ahead. 2 root 3 units downward. So it is 2i minus 2 root 3j. So that is the value of v. What is the value of r? I already said the value of r is equal to 10i because it is 10 units ahead. I already told you the value of r is 10i plus 0j. So you can write plus 0j. And now you need to do r cross p. So angular momentum is equal to r vector which is basically 10i. Okay. So 10i cross this is r vector cross p. So, to find out p, you multiply mass with the velocity. So, 3 times 2 is equal to 6 i. 3 times 2 root 3 is equal to 6 root 3 j cap. 6 i, 6 root 3. Again, i cross i is 0. 10 times 6 is 60. So, you will write minus 60 root 3, but i cross j is simply k. i cross j over here, i cross j is simply k. So, you will just simply write 60 root 3 k cap. Okay. So, what is new in this question? In this question, you have to find out the velocity vector as two different components. So, you have to sometimes split into components, find out the velocity vector, from there you will find out the momentum and then you do r cross p. So, in all of these problems, there is one thing that is common and I deliberately kept it common. None of these are particles that are actually rotating. So, how would you calculate the angular momentum of something that is rotating? You would just write i into omega. So, the next couple of questions would be about that. And then we will see what is very important to this chapter. Particles that are both rotating as well as they are translating. So, that is what is important to us. We will talk about that. So, I think all of this should be clear to you. It should be kind of easy. Okay. Just find out r as a vector quantity. Find out p as a vector quantity and just do the cross product. Even if something is rotating, this will apply. I will show you in just a minute. Alright, so we are ready for some more problems, but these problems will be about objects that are actually rotating. So, first of all, let's start with objects that are rotating. So, let's take a disc or let's take a ring. Let's take a ring. This one is a ring. Let us say a ring of mass 4 kgs, fairly heavy ring with a radius of let's say 2 meters. Okay a ring of mass 4 kgs with a radius of 2 meters covers, let us give you a new kind of question, let us say it covers 30 rotations per minute, 30 rpm, 30 rotations per minute, find out its angular momentum. So, L as a vector means you will have to give a direction, 
over here I am removing the vector part. L is still a vector quantity but I am just removing the vector part because it is pretty clear that the angular momentum is going to be in the upward downward direction. So, if I give you the direction of omega you can just clearly say because the fingers are going to point in this direction the thumb is going to be in the upward direction. So, right in thumb rule. If something is rotating like this your omega value is going to be in the upward direction. So, L is also in the upward direction. This is L. Now, you need to find out the value of L. How will you do that? In general you can write r cross p, but here there is no p because it is a particle that is like it is a ring, it is an entire object that is rotating. So, in such a case L vector is defined as i omega vector. We are not interested in vectors, so we will just write L is equal to i omega, simple L is equal to i omega. Okay? So, our ring is of mass 4 kgs, the radius is 2 meters, so the moment of inertia of the ring i of the ring is equal to m into r square. So, you will just put m, you will put r from here and you will write m r square. So, m is equal to 4. The square of r is also equal to 4. So, your answer is 16 kg meter square. Okay. So, this is 16 kg meter square. That is your value of i. So, we can write i into omega. So, i is equal to 16, 30 rotations per minute. Can we directly substitute? Rotations per minute is not an SI unit. So, what you will do is you will write 30 each rotation. So, one circle that you make that rotation is equal to 2 pi. So, you will write 30 into 2 pi divided by 1 minute is 60 seconds. So, that is 60. So, all of this is going to cancel out which means that omega is simply pi. So, you will write into pi. So, what is your angular momentum? Your angular momentum is 16 pi. We have done so many questions, we did not even once talk about the unit of angular momentum. The unit of angular momentum is pretty simple, take the unit of i, the unit of i is kg meter square. What is the unit of omega? Radian per second square. So, we do not have radian, we do not write radian, we will just simply write omega is radians per second, not second square, omega is radians per second. So, you will simply write 16 pi kg meter square per second. If you want, you can also do this. You can write r cross p. So, r is in meters and p is in kg meter per second. So, the unit is once again meter times meter. The unit is once again meter square. Second comes as second and kg goes in as kg. Okay. So, if something is actually rotating, the angular momentum is very simple. L vector is equal to i omega vector. All right, let us give you another question. This is a question where a ring is rotating. Let us give you a question where let us say a wheel is rolling on the ground. So, do not bother about rolling right now. Let us say that the wheel is moving forward at a speed of 2 meters per second. Okay. Mass of the wheel is like around 2 kgs. And the radius of the wheel, this radius is equal to 1 meter. Consider the wheel as a disc. So, can you find out the momentum of the wheel? Can you find out the angular momentum of the wheel but about the center? So, angular momentum about the center of the wheel. Find out both of these things. So, this is a wheel that is plainly rolling on a surface. So, it is given to us that this wheel is rolling. All we need to do is to find out the linear momentum and the angular momentum about the center of the wheel. Okay? So, this problem can get fairly complicated. I have simplified the problem for you. Right now, there is not much that is asked in the question. Simply find out p. How will you find out p? So, p vector, it is a vector over here. So, you immediately draw an x and y axis. This is your x direction, that is your y direction and p is in the x direction. So, we can write p is equal to mass, mass is 2 kgs multiplied by velocity. So, the velocity is 2 meters per second in the x direction. So, that is i cap. So, you will write 2 into 2 is 4 i cap. You will write 4 i cap. Okay. So, what is your momentum? Your momentum is 4 i. Understood? Now, momentum is a simple quantity. What if I ask you what is the angular momentum? Immediately the question arises, what is the axis? So, in this case, the axis is specified as the center of the wheel. The center of the wheel itself is the axis. 
So when the center of the wheel is the axis, the angular momentum is purely because of rotation of the wheel. Okay, we'll talk about this concept in some more detail. Today your goal is to only understand how to calculate angular momentum in simple situations. So this one is a slightly complicated situation. We are simplifying it and I'm saying what is the angular momentum about the center. So about the center, imagine that you're sitting in a car. So if you're sitting in a car and you look at the wheel, the wheel is only rotating. For you, the wheel is rotating because if for you the wheel was moving, then how come you're sitting on the car, right? The wheel is moving with respect to the road. The wheel is moving with respect to the outside surroundings. But if you are inside the car, with respect to you, only the wheel is rotating. So that is what I am saying. You are sitting on the axis of the wheel. What is the wheel doing? The wheel is rotating. What is the angular momentum of the wheel? The angular momentum is only because of the rotation. So at this point, you might remember from yesterday's class that I told you the kinetic energy is because of rotation as well as because of translation. So angular momentum also the same thing applies. Angular momentum is because of two things. It can be because of translation. It can also be because of rotation. So dhire dhire we are going to that concept. We are little by little stepping towards that concept. Right now just try to understand the wheel is only rotating. So the angular momentum will be because of the rotation of the wheel. Okay. So how fast is my wheel rotating? I can write V is equal to R into omega. So what is R? R is 1 meter. This is V. R is equal to 1 meter. So R is 1 meter. What is V? V is 2 meters per second. So from here you can see once we cancel meter we automatically write radians. So 2 radians per second is your value of omega. Done. So omega is 2 radians per second. So to find out the value of L, you will write L vector, you can write it as a vector. So here this is the Z direction, okay, this is Z vector, hai, Z direction. Hai. So L vector is equal to I times omega vector. Your wheel is rotating like this, this is the direction of rotation. So what is your omega? Your omega is into the plane of the board. So if it was out of the plane of the board, in this direction, that would have been plus Z. In the inward direction, this will be minus Z. So minus Z is minus K. So your omega vector is first of all minus k. So the value of omega over here is minus 2k. What is the value of i? This is a disk. So you would write half into m into r square. So r is equal to 1. So the value of i is simply 1 kg meter per second. I mean kg meter square. I'm sorry. So the value of i is simply 1. Just put 1 over here kg meter square multiplied by per second. So the total angular momentum is equal to minus 2. So if you want to write the units kg meter square per second. The angular momentum of the wheel about its center is minus 2 kg meter square per second. How can this problem be asked in a more advanced way? I could ask you what is the angular momentum about the origin? So at the origin there would be two kinds of motion. First of all if you notice this line this line is rotating. So after some time when the wheel comes to a point like this, then this line will become like this. This line is also rotating. In addition to that, the wheel is rotating. So there will be two rotations and the angular momentum will have two components. Okay. So we'll talk about that later, slightly later today. Did you understand everything till this point? Did you understand how to calculate angular momentum for something that is rotating? So this is how it is done. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, let's go for another question. Let us say that there is a wheel, okay. Let us say that there is a wheel and it is kept on a platform. So there is a platform and on this platform a wheel is kept. So there is some kind of an arrangement and on this there is a wheel. A wheel is kept on a platform. At the same time two things are happening. So first of all there is an axis in this direction. There is also an axis in this direction. The wheel is rotating. In this direction the wheel is rotating. So if the wheel rotates like this 
you put your fingers in this direction your axis is towards that side so there is some angular velocity over here so omega 1 is equal to 2 radians per second in the i direction so 2 i cap i'm giving you the values as a vector so you don't have to worry and there is also a rotation in this direction so if you put your fingers like this then this is going to be in the upward direction so there is another angular velocity which is let's say 4 radians per second in the j direction so you might ask is it possible for something to have two different rotations yes it is possible for something to have two different rotations i'll show it to you so that you can understand what i'm saying imagine that there is a duster like this okay so i'm rotating the duster so what is happening right now the duster is rotating like this so if i rotate the duster in this direction my omega is like you know my omega is going to be like this so the omega value is towards the inside there is only one rotation i'm rotating the duster like this kind of like a steering wheel so you rotate the duster like this your omega is towards the inward direction in addition to that if i start rotating the duster in this direction if i'm rotating the duster like this there is an omega in the upward direction what if i start doing both of it i rotate the duster like this and in addition to that i also rotate it like this so it's rotating like this and i'm also rotating it like this so the duster is going to have a very complicated rotation it's going to rotate like this it is also going to rotate like this so the duster is going to rotate somewhat like this you know it's going to start twisting in such a case you will have two different angular velocities so these angular velocities are not different to each other both of them they will add up so this is one vector this is another vector so both of the angular velocities are going to add up to give you a resultant angular velocity so this is your resultant so if there are two angular velocities if there are two angular velocities just remember that the angular velocity is a vector so what you're supposed to do is add as vector so if there are two different angular velocities you add them up as a vector quantity and then you start solving the problem so let us say the mass of this thing is equal to 1 kg let us also say that the radius of this thing is equal to 3 meters and let us assume that this thing is a ring okay it's simply a ring so what is the angular momentum of the system about the center about this point where both of the axes are coinciding what is the angular momentum about the center so when the angular momentum is asked you would obviously write l is equal to i omega but keep in mind there are two omegas over here so there is one omega for horizontal rotation the rotation like this there is another omega for vertical rotation so for the rotation like this which one will you choose you will choose the sum of both of them you will have to take the sum of both of them so omega is 2i the other omega is 4j so what you will take is you will write omega net so omega net is equal to 2i plus 4j so 2i plus 4j is your omega vector now take the value of i so it will just be m r square so m into r square is 9 kg meter per like you know kg meter square so l vector is equal to 9 times the omega net vector so 9 times 2i which is equal to 18i 9 times 4j which is equal to 36j so what does that mean it means that the angular momentum has an x component because the particle is rotating like this it also has a j component because the particle is rotating in the vertical direction so it has two components it can also have three components that's not a problem so whenever something is rotating no matter in what direction that thing is rotating you can find out the angular momentum by finding out i okay i is not going to be difficult for you to find out we can easily find out the value of i the other thing that you'll have to do is you'll have to find out the value of omega so omega is normally it will be a single vector if there are two different kinds of rotation for example if i show you once again imagine that there are two dusters over here okay so there are two dusters i'm rotating one duster so the upper duster is also rotating if i rotate this one then this entire system is going to rotate like this so in this case the axis of rotation is like this in the other case the axis of rotation is like this so if i rotate both of it the system is going to rotate like this like you know it is going to start tumbling so in this kind of a rotation what you have to do is you will have to add up this omega along with this one you will get a resultant in this direction so you will get some kind of a resultant like this so once you have the resultant your angular momentum is going to be like this so it is going to have some vertical component 
it is going to have some horizontal component so overall it is going to be in this direction samajh mein aaya so whenever something is rotating the object has angular momentum for any rotating object you will have angular momentum even if something is not rotating even in such cases you will have an angular momentum so angular momentum is a matter of definition i want you to understand this thing very clearly today let's do some more questions let's show you at least one more question before uh, we kind of wind up the class let's show you at least one more question where an object is moving as well as rotating so you can understand how to add up the angular momentum i showed you very simple cases where an object is simply moving and there is a position vector i also showed you a case where an object is simply rotating then i showed you a case where an object is moving and rotating but you only considered the rotational motion now i'm going to show you a case where an object is moving and rotating and we will consider both kinds of motion okay so let us go back to our rolling example and let us say that there is an object on a very large table i am not going to include rolling right now just to keep things simple for you so let us imagine that there is an object on a very large table so this is kind of like a table okay so there is an object on a very large table this is a large table okay and on this there is like a carom board there is a striker so this striker is a disc let us say the mass of the disc is equal to 2 kg let us say the radius of the disc is equal to 1 meter okay so this is a disc two things are happening at the same time first of all for us this is our x direction for us that is the y direction and in this case in this problem that is your z direction so this is x y z so our disc is rotating okay so as seen from the top the rotation is like this so if you look at it from the top the rotation is like this in addition to that when the disc i'll give you the position when the disc is over here the disc is going in this direction so the position of the disc is let us say it is at uh this distance is like around 4 let's say this distance is 3 we are using simple values so it is 4 along the y axis 3 along the x axis that is 3i plus 4j okay that's the position it's over here and it is going somewhat in this direction so this direction is negative y so we can write the momentum of this particle or the velocity of the particle is equal to let's say 2i minus 1j So if you look at this entire thing from the top if you're seeing this thing from the top you would see that there is a carom board this is your x that is your y at some position like here where this point is equal to 4 and that point is equal to 3 a particle is moving in this direction okay the particle is moving in that direction and this is 2i minus 1j so this value is 2i minus 1j and the position of this point is 3i plus 4j so this point is at 3i plus 4j now i'm expecting you to calculate the angular momentum of this particle about the origin about the corner of the table find l find l about the corner of the table how would you do this In this case there are two different kinds of motion over here there are two different kinds of motion there is the rotational motion of the particle so over here you have rotational motion there is a disc the disc is rotating in addition to that you have the disc which is translating in a particular direction so there is two things there is rotation okay in addition to the rotation there is also translation there is translation so there is rotation as well as translation so whenever in a particular situation you have rotation as well as translation the angular momentum is the sum of both so l vector will come because of translation you will have some l vector because of translation in addition to that you will have an l vector because of rotation so you will have to write l vector is equal to l rotation plus l translation you have to calculate two different vectors you'll have to calculate two different vectors and you will have to add it to find out the total angular momentum so in this case let's find out the rotational one first because the rotational one is very easy 
you have to multiply i with omega and then we'll find out the translation one as well keep in mind normally angular momentum is not a very complicated thing even if you don't write it as a vector angular momentum is okay you don't need to always write it as a vector quantity but whenever you are adding angular momentum or for some reason if you are going to subtract the angular momentum you are going to find out the change in angular momentum we'll do that it's called as angular impulse so whenever you are trying to find out change it is important to write angular momentum as a vector let's start with the rotation part so because of rotation so how is our particle rotating this is our karam striker the axis is z axis and it is rotating in this direction so what direction do we have take your fingers wrap it around your direction is positive z so your direction is plus k cap because of the rotation your direction is plus k cap now what is the value of i our thing is a disk i said that this thing is a disk so the i value is equal to half mr square so that is equal to half into m into r square so that's just basically equal to 1 what is the value of omega that i gave you did i give you any value of omega over here i haven't written a value of omega so let us choose that omega is equal to let's say 2 radians per second I'm just trying to teach it to you not specific values let's say omega is equal to 2 radians per second so omega is 2 here you require the direction so what is the direction the direction is k cap so the angular momentum only because of rotation is equal to i times omega i is 1 omega is 2 so it is equal to 1 times 2 which is just 2 k cap so what is the angular momentum because of rotation 2 k cap okay now we will calculate because of translation so over here we have angular momentum because of translation so what is the translational angular momentum you will have to use r cross p so L translation is found from using R vector cross P vector. So in today's class, did you understand at least this much? When we have angular momentum, we can classify it as two things because of rotation, because of translation. In the case of rotation, we just write I into omega vector. In the case of translation, what we do is we write R vector cross P vector. Keep in mind, you can add it only if you can add it only if the axis is same. As usual, you can only add if the axis is same. If the axis is not same, you should not be able to add the angular momentum. Okay? Fine. So, what is L translation? L translation is equal to R vector cross P vector. So, what is your R vector over here? R vector is equal to 3i plus 4j what is your p vector so from here we can calculate p vector as we can write down the p vector as m into v so 2 into 2 is 4 2 into 1 is 2 so you will write 4i minus 2j so 4i minus 2j right so r cross p so you will write 3i plus 4j cross 4i minus 2j 4i minus 2j. So we have already done this thing once with matrices. We know that our answer will only be in the terms of k cap. So what will we get? 3 times 2 which is equal to minus 6 minus 4 times 4 which is equal to 16. So you will get 16 and 6 you will get minus 22 k cap. So your value will be minus 22 k cap because of translation and it will be equal to 2 k cap because of rotation. So over here, I am going to write it over here. What is the total angular momentum you will get? L net is equal to L rotation plus L translation. So how much is that? L rotation is 2k cap. L translation is minus 22k cap. So the total angular momentum is equal to minus 20k cap. So what does that mean? that value means that it is moving faster than how much it is rotating so the total angular momentum is net in the downward direction over here there are two things because this particle is rotating there is a small angular momentum in the upward direction and because the particle is going like this there is a very big angular momentum in the downward direction so when you add the small angular momentum with the big one the resultant angular momentum is minus 20 k okay so this is everything about angular momentum. I told you that you can add the angular momentum only if the axis is the same. Now you might ask me, 
when we are trying to find out the rotation of this uh, striker, the angular momentum, we are actually taking two different axes. We are taking this axis of rotation as the center and then we are taking the axis as this point. But actually what we are doing is we are taking this as the axis, about this it is moving. So once we get to that point, it is rotating also. Okay. So instead of shifting that rotation over here, we are saying first of all let us go to that point. So that represents the translational part and this represents the rotational part. In general, just keep in mind, if an object is translating and the object is rotating, find out the angular moment of rotation about the center of the object, okay, about the center of mass of the object, find out the angular momentum about the center of mass, also find out the angular momentum about the origin or about whichever axis is given to you, in this case the axis is the corner, so whichever axis is given to you, find out the translational angular momentum about the axis find out the rotational angular momentum about the center of mass of the object and add both of them together. Okay, see you.